I get a lot of questions about the gear that I use to capture shots like this, and this, and this, and all these. Honestly, that's a really easy question to answer. All I use is, are you ready for this? GoPro Max. Yep, that's right, that's all I use. I got some stuff on the lens here. Just clean it up, shine it up a bit. Uh-oh, turned it on. Yep, that's all I use. It's a wide angle lens and 360 degree field of view is perfect for capturing jets that are way in the distance, really far away. It's great, crisp shots. All right, catch you guys in the next video. I'm just kidding, I don't use a GoPro. Have you ever used a GoPro? Nah, let's get into the actual video. Capturing moments like these requires a few things. Patience, precision, and most importantly, great snacks. And the right gear, obviously. Today I'm gonna go through my bags, my cameras, my lenses, and everything you'll catch me rolling with. Let's start off with the unsung heroes of photo and video, the bags. For a long time, I used the Peak Design Everyday Backpack and found myself trying to squeeze every piece of gear I owned into it every single time. One time, I accidentally put my laptop in it before I went hiking, along with all my camera gear, so you can imagine it was extremely heavy. I would suggest not doing that. So I started looking around and I landed on Wandered. This is their Priv, Priv Key Provoke. I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'll put it on the screen. It's that backpack, and it's great. I love it, it's a lot smaller. I also have the big version, but this one, they come with a photo cube inside. So you get this little photo cube right here and it has a bunch of dividers that you can put in it to keep things kind of safe and separated. And then it's got this compartment up top here that you can see, but the best part about these backpacks is the roll top that you get up here. So you can just unroll it and it almost doubles the size of the backpack, which is great. So I'll usually put camera gear down here and then up top I'll put softer things like snacks and jackets and hoodies and you know PJs for the plane. They're great backpacks. And a couple of years ago I landed on this one. This is their duo day pack and it's my go-to bag now. I love it. It's great for traveling or going on short hikes because it's nice and compact. I don't think they actually make this one anymore, but they do make a few that are like it, so I'll, I'll link those below. The only downside is it doesn't fit a ton of gear just because it's it's pretty small. It does fit a laptop. I can put my 70 to 200 in the little compartment that they have down here and a bunch of other stuff in it. But usually if I'm traveling with this, I'm also traveling with my Pelican case that I can take a lot more stuff in. And this, is the Pelican case that I have. It's the 1510, which is the carry-on one, so you can put it up above you in the plane. And I got the one with the Trek Pack dividers, which are awesome because you can move it around and configure it exactly how you want. Right now I have it configured for my camera body, my 70 to 200, and my 200 to 500, or my drone if I wanted to, plus a bunch of accessories and microphones and everything like that. But camera gear is really expensive, so I would absolutely suggest anyone get a Pelican case. This one is uh, one of the color cases with the different colored latches and handles and everything. They make any color you could want. It's pretty cool. I'll link this one below too. Now talking about my camera and lens setup, let's start with the cornerstone of it. The Nikon Z8. This camera. This camera. What do I even say about this camera? It's amazing but that's an understatement. It's the best camera I've ever had. I had a Nikon Z6 and a Z7 and I upgraded to this and this thing combines the best of those two cameras and sprinkles in a little bit more sauce. Here are the specs of it. 45 megapixels, 
a blistering 20 frames per second with no blackout when you're taking photos, which is key for what I do. It can also do 120 FPS when you're taking images, but only in JPEG and they're fairly small. So you might as well take video in 4K or 8K and get screen grabs out of it. Because the video that this thing can do is pretty impressive. 4K at 120 FPS and 8K at 60 FPS. It can also capture all of that in ProRes, which I haven't really done too much of because it takes up a ton of space on the cards. To give you some perspective, my 64 gig card, if I'm shooting 4K 30 frames per second, I have about 44 minutes of shooting time. When I switch to ProRes, that goes down to a minute and 40 seconds. So huge difference. And I, I just haven't had anything to, you know, really put that to good use. So I, I typically shoot with that off. And you also need a very powerful computer or laptop or anything to actually be able to process all that and color grade and everything. And like I said, I haven't used it too much yet, but in the future, I like to have the ability to actually use it because ProRes is just so amazing, especially when you get into color grading, the depth, everything's just, it's so good. Zooming into lenses, my 200 to 500 f5.6 is my trusted companion for when I'm getting shots like these. It's typically my go-to for aviation because you're not always right up close to the action. This lens gives the biggest bang for your buck out of all my lenses. It's really low cost for the focal length and the image quality is really good and it, I think it was only about 1400 bucks, something like that, so it's a great deal. I use it on my Z-mount camera and it's still awesome, it's still quick. But my favorite lens by far is this one, my 70 to 200 f2.8. It's amazing. It's my go-to for pretty much everything. This lens has never missed a beat. It's quite a bit more expensive, but you really do get what you pay for with this type of lens. The glass is really nice, the autofocus is ultra quick, and since it has a 2.8 aperture, the bokeh is amazing. I typically use this one for video and closer up shots where I'm gonna be closer to the subject, but I bet because of how clear it is, because of the glass in it, I bet it would be just as crisp as my 200 to 500 if I cropped in a bit. So I'm gonna, I'll give that a shot sometime. And with both of these lenses, I use the FTZ adapter because I haven't upgraded to the Z mount lenses, hopefully soon. If anyone at Nikon's watching, hit me up. If this next part isn't proof that you can capture awesome content with something that everyone has in their pocket, then I don't know what is. I've captured videos like this, this, And this, all with my iPhone. I use the iPhone 14 Pro because it has 4K, 60 FPS, and the 3X zoom camera. The 15 Pro Max has a 5X camera, which is even better, but I'm not the biggest fan of those huge phones, so hopefully they add it into the 16 Pro. And then when I'm looking to capture video and photos at the same time, I'll use my phone with this clever little clamp right here. Just put your phone in here, put it to the top of the lens, and I can shoot photos with my camera and video with my phone. A lot of the videos that you've seen on my shorts or reels or anything like that have all been this way. And as if my camera setup wasn't heavy enough with all my lenses and everything, I went ahead and added this small rig cage. It's their new Night Eagle one. And I mostly added it because it looks freaking sweet, right? And it also has all these cool attachment points where I can, you know, put more microphones, monitors, other accessories, anything like that. And it adds some protection, which is nice because, you know, cameras aren't cheap. And this one was not cheap either. So I like to keep it protected. But it also has this cool little magnetized uh, screwdriver so you can attach every, everything you need to it. You can actually take this off with it. It's awesome. Small Rig does a good job. I really like small rig products. I think they do a fantastic job. Stability is so important, especially when you're shooting video. When I'm shooting photos, I typically handhold it because it gives me a lot more freedom to move around and you know, kind of point things where I need it to. Now for video, I've actually combined a Manfrotto monopod and a small rig fluid head, which offers the perfect balance between mobility and smooth cinematic pans. And with this combination, it's substantially cheaper than if I got the Manfrotto full fluid head monopod. That thing is so expensive. I think I spent half of that, maybe even less. Now I have a few different filters for all my lenses, but the one that I use the most 
is this one. It's the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon Circular Polarizer. That's a mouthful. And it's fantastic. I love this thing. It Honestly, I never take it off. That might, that might be because it's stuck on here and I haven't been able to get it off in a really long time. But I, honestly, I don't have a reason to take it off because it works so well for me and everything that I do. This thing is awesome to help reduce glare, especially on cars and cockpit windows. Although I haven't totally mastered it on the cockpit window because, well, you have to spin it to find the sweet spot where it's actually working. And trying to do that on something moving 500 miles an hour, um, it's just not, not feasible because they'd be gone by the time I figured it out. So if you have any tips for that, let me know. I could use the help. And I'm also working on a top secret project for a new type of stabilizer to track fast moving vehicles like aircraft and cars and everything. And this is it. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? I'm still working out some kinks, like how to get it through TSA. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But let me know what you think. Video is only so good without the sound to match. I've tried a lot of different microphones over the years and I'm always exploring new options. I had the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, but it just wasn't what I was looking for and it's not that great to be honest. I know vloggers love it, but for what I do, it's not that great. So what I landed on was the Rode VideoMic NTG, which is fantastic. I love this thing. It's been great at every turn. It's a small shotgun mic, and I think it's way better than the VideoMic Pro. First of all, it's made of metal instead of plastic, and it's really good at isolating the audio for whatever you're shooting at, especially interviews. It's great for run and gun, so if you're shooting you know, a car over here and then an interview over here, it's really easy. It just switches easily, picks up what you want, and it's perfect for that. And then the other microphone that I use is the Rode Video Micro. And this thing, it's just so cheap, it's small, it's easy. You could actually throw it in your pocket, which I do a lot. And it, it just doesn't take up a lot of space. And it's great at capturing kind of spatial audio. And it's surprisingly good with jets, where the NTG, you kind of have to find that sweet spot where it's not gonna blow out the microphone the whole time. This one, you just throw it on top of your camera and you can set it and forget it. It's great and it's super cheap. Storage is crucial and fast storage is even more crucial. Luckily, a lot of the new mirrorless cameras require really fast cards like the Sony QXD and the CF Express card because they need to be able to write huge files extremely quickly so the camera doesn't buffer. When I got into mirrorless cameras, the QXD was the only thing available and I still use them today. I have a 32 gig and a 64 gig and they just, they just work, which is great. And that's all I want. I just want a card that works. I don't want to have to worry about you know, footage getting corrupted or anything like that. So definitely get one. Now let's talk about external hard drives. It's been a journey to find the right one. I've used SanDisk, Lacey, WD, and none of those are my go-to anymore, especially SanDisk, because they just started randomly disconnecting from my computer in the middle of editing sessions. And I can't tell you just how frustrating that is. If you ever really wanna test your anger management skills, get one of these and try to edit a long video. It's fun, it's a lot of fun, I promise. I don't, I don't promise that. And because of all that, I followed a few great suggestions and got myself a Samsung T9 hard drive. And it has been fantastic. I can happily say that I can make it through an entire editing session without wanting to throw something across the room. So, that's a win in my book. Plus, it's really fast so you can edit 4K and 8K video without any noticeable lag. My camera bag is constantly evolving and I'm always looking for new things to add into it. So if I come across anything cool, I'll let you guys know. And if there's anything that you think I should try out or that I'm not using or that I missed, let me know in the comments. And don't forget that everything I talked about in this video is linked below. I get a little bit of a kickback, so I'd appreciate it. But if not, you know, your subscription means a lot too. All right, catch you guys in the next video. Bye.